the digital revolution. Everyone here is part of it. It impacts every part of our lives. This revolution is driven by bits, bits in your cell phones, bits on the internet, bits combining with other bits to create the largest data set in the world. A data set is now being used to train the largest AI models that we've ever seen. This revolution in artificial intelligence, driven by these bits, is giving us the large language models, giving us generative AI, giving us new visual models as well. But this is just the beginning of what we're about to see. The world we live in is not made of bits. We are not made of bits. We are made of atoms. The molecules in our bodies, the medicines that we need to solve Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and cancer, these are made of atoms. The clean energy that we need from solar and wind, the batteries we need to store this energy, the batteries for electric vehicles, atoms. And so in addition to the AI revolution, we now need to talk about the revolution in atoms, bits and atoms. And this combined revolution is what I'm here to share with you today. So let's talk about where the AI revolution came from. It came from our brains. Our brains are 80 to 100 billion neurons. They're all connected up. And we believe there's about 100 trillion to maybe 1,000 trillion connections called synapses in the, in the human brain. Early AI pioneers were inspired by this architecture to create new kinds of programs, artificial neural nets, mimicking the biological neural nets in our brain. And it turns out over time, this became more and more successful. In particular, it was the ability of these particular frameworks to drive the new kinds of language models. First, RNNs, recurrent neural nets, which look at language sequentially. Very good predictive value, but very slow. And then in 2017, a paper came out from Google. Attention is all you need. And that paper gave us a new model, a new way of organizing these artificial nodes, these artificial neurons. And that's called the transformer. The transformer does even a better job of predicting that next word in a sentence, a phrase, an essay, but also does it really quickly. And that's what we're seeing right happen now with the GPTs. That's where we're getting whole sentences, essays, books that we can now see coming out of the AI. Not perfect, but certainly much better than before. But the world of AI is not the only piece of technology we need to look at. We now need to think about the world of atoms. If we want to impact medicine, if we want to impact energy, logistics, transportation, all the aspects of our society, the biggest challenges, the biggest problems in our society, we also need to think about atoms themselves. And so let's talk about that world. Well, let's talk about billiard balls as an example of how we think things work in the world. When we grow up, let's say, let's say we're playing billiards, and we hit one ball, hits another ball, and we understand that kind of interaction. And that interaction was described by Newton. An apocryphal apple fell on his head. He described gravity. He described the laws of motion. And this gave us a wonderful piece of physics to describe our world and the dynamics of our world for hundreds of years. But then in the late 1800s, something happened. A crisis occurred because it was thought initially that the atom was indivisible, but then the electron was discovered something smaller than the atom, something inside the atom. And it was then understood that the atom is made up of a nucleus, a center, with protons and neutrons, protons positively charged, and the electrons worrying about, negatively charged, worrying about this nucleus. But Newtonian physics told us that, in fact, this couldn't be, that those electrons would fall right into the nucleus and would collapse the atom. But that prediction, of course, is incorrect. We are standing here today. Our world exists. Atoms are stable. Electrons do run around the nucleus and have the ability to stay there. So a new physics was necessary. A revolution was necessary. And a number of pioneers, physicists in the early part of the 1900s, came up with this new revolution. And this revolution is called quantum physics. Quantum physics tells us how things work at the very basic level of our universe. How electrons meet other electrons. Not like billiard balls, not like Newtonian physics, but with this new 
quantum equation. Schrodinger, as an example, gave us the wave function, a function that describes the dynamics of particles meeting up with each other or a particle moving on its own. Heisenberg gave us another equivalent formulation of quantum physics, the matrix formulation. And that's critical because it turns out the chips that we're about to talk about do matrix algebra really, really well. And so these formulations led to a flowering of quantum physics and its applications. Quantum has already given us a lot of impact in our world. The transistor that powers every computing device that we have, our mobile phones, every data center in the world. The transistor was created by three physicists at Bell Labs in the 50s. Three physicists using quantum principles moved us from the vacuum tube era and the era of ENIAC, the size of a large room, one computer, to the transistor era, the miniaturization, Moore's law, all because of quantum. And they got the Nobel Prize in physics for that. But quantum's also given us breakthroughs in medical diagnostics. The MRI machine that has saved so many lives is a quantum device. The laser, such as this laser pointer right here, is a quantum innovation. But quantum's about to give us much more now. We're about to see the next quantum revolution. And how exactly does this work? Well, we now have an understanding because of quantum of how electrons can meet other electrons, how they might bind together in different kinds of bonding. And those electrons, of course, and those atoms now bound together can now form molecules. And the molecules can form even more complex molecules. And that could be, for example, DNA that's in almost every cell in our body. And that DNA, of course, powers and is the blueprint for the human body. And now with this understanding, we can do very amazing things. So let's talk about how we can compute the world of atoms. Let's talk about the GPU. Well, the G in GPU, the graphics, is of course because the GPU was invented by NVIDIA and other companies to improve video game graphics. Every time you see someone playing video games, thank them, because of them and their video games, we have the GPU. And they indeed did improve video game graphics, but that's not all. After that, people in the AI world realized that we can use that GPU for another application, for driving those deep learning networks, those artificial neural networks that we just discussed a few minutes ago. And it turns out that that maths of multiplying a large matrix of numbers by another one was not only good for video gaming, but also really good for the kind of mass that drives neural networks. Because we can take a, an array, rows and columns, just like an Excel spreadsheet, of weights, the weighting of connections between the nodes, and we can multiply them by others, and we can drive the computation of these larger and larger neural nets. And that's why we have these LLMs today. That's why we're seeing these breakthroughs today, because of these chips and the large data set as large as the web itself. But now we can turn to a third application of GPUs. Video gaming and graphics there, AI and deep neural nets, and now simulation. Simulating our world itself. Using the equations of quantum, we can now simulate billions and billions of times small changes in a molecule to optimize it for different applications. This is a very exciting moment in the history of humanity when we can finally do this. In fact, while LLMs and generative AI are key terms today, another term will join that lexicon in the next few years, and that's the term simulation itself. Simulation works complement to AI to come together and create a new data set, a data set that did not exist before, a data set of the electronic configurations in a molecule. And then we can apply AI to that to optimize it for certain applications. Let's take an example in medicine, Alzheimer's. ALS, MS, Parkinson's, many types of cancer, no good drugs yet for all these different diseases. Despite 40 years of research, it's not for lack of trying. The problem is that it takes 13 to 15 years on average to get a molecule to become a medicine. It takes two and a half to three and a half billion dollars to try to get these medicines to market. And even with all that time and money, there's an 80% failure once it gets to clinical trials. 40% of that failure is in phase three. Phase one, safety. Phase two, efficacy. Phase three, the scale-up 
to thousands of people, and that's where a lot of the failure happens. But if we can simulate that molecule billions of times, making small changes each time in a virtual human, that would be something that would de-risk that molecule, that we can optimize that molecule before it hit the first human. And that's now what we can do. With these complementary tools of quantum simulation, simulating a digital twin of that molecule, we take that molecule from ideas given to us by the labs, the research labs, here in the UK, on the continent, in US, in Canada, all over the world. These are wonderful, promising new molecules, but without these tools, there's an 80% failure rate ahead of them for them. And now what we can do is we can take a digital twin of that molecule and run it in these kinds of computer systems billions of times, making small changes, optimizing for the on-target effects, that is, solving and treating that disease, and minimizing any side effects or off-target effects. Doing all that work before it hits clinical trials, and doing so in much less time, which much less money, and most importantly, de-risking that molecule so we can get something out for those patients who need it. So that's the world of medicine. Now let's turn to the world of clean energy, another area that needs very significant innovation. Batteries are critical to the clean energy revolution. Without batteries, it's not going to happen. One application of batteries we're all familiar with is in electric vehicles. But a bigger market for batteries and a bigger impact for clean energy is actually batteries in buildings like this, in buildings like your home, office buildings, campuses, schools around the world, batteries that would store energy from solar, wind, and other renewable sources and provide it throughout the day, turning solar, for example, from an intermittent energy source to a baseload source, a source that exists all time. But we've been stuck right now for the past 30 plus years with lithium ion technology. Lithium ion technology does not follow Moore's law. It doesn't double in capability and half in cost every 18 months. That's not what happens in batteries. At best, it might get better about 4% per year. So we need a revolution there. We need to optimize and increase the efficiency of lithium ion batteries, but we also need to go beyond lithium chemistry. We need to explore the combinatorial billions of possibilities of other chemicals, other elements from the periodic table coming together to create new kinds of batteries perhaps based on aluminum, perhaps based on zinc. That would take us beyond the limitations that we have right now in the sources of lithium, which is limited, and even more limited is the processing of lithium for battery-grade product. We need to get beyond these limitations by exploring a much larger chemical space, and that's where quantum simulation comes in. The combination of quantum simulation in these computer systems, driven by GPUs today, one day adding quantum computers to that in that mesh in a hybrid of classical and quantum, and then running AI on that new data set to drive towards optimization. This is where we can power our clean energy revolution. So to sum up, medicine, clean energy, the world of atoms, the world we exist in, this is the next part of the revolution. AI revolution plus, which is the bits revolution, plus the atoms revolution, bits and atoms, this is the revolution that is now upon us. We invite you to join us in this revolution and change the future. Thank you.